thither often to that palace from whence beauty is fled, came Brian to ask me, and I went for his sake. So the mythology and the poetry and my own little inner dreams and concoctions of mythology and poetry were that feasts, and that's why the last word in my memoir is the word banquet, that feasts were like the marriage feast of Cana. They, they, the word was in me as that a feast could only be an occasion of happiness. So I come to London, I am married and living in SW20 and taking a bus to get a bus. And life was very uh, punitive in every way and Spartan. So I then leave that marriage rather like, well actually not as brave as Nora in Ibsen's doll house, Doll's House, because at least Nora makes a statement by saying she will be true to herself. I left in what is unfortunately called a big hurry without <laughs> anything in my pocket. And I didn't even know if I was going to be true to myself. I knew I had to leave. And then I, I wrote um, two books, Girls of Their Married Bliss, which was the third of the trilogy, and another book which created a lot of rumpus, August is a Wicked Month. And I got quite a bit of money for August is a Wicked Month. So now I could have the parties. The parties were Saturday, but the clearing up was Sunday. And realizing that, again, the schizophrenia of myself, or the division within myself, that really, where was my true self? Up in the top of the house those Monday mornings, when I was writing about rain and wind and home and passions and thwarted passion and loneliness, which I think loneliness is so ingrained in me that I I'm always lonely, even at a party, even when I was giving them. I was busy, but I was lonely. It's a different matter. And the chapter ends, uh, which has not annoyed some people, but has taken them by surprise, in which I have a dream. There's about six dreams in my book that were significant to me. I have a, uh, the dream was, I have the party, it's my kitchen. It's I love Buñuel, Exterminating Angel and those films. And I throw these boiling cauldrons at, uh, surprise, at guests who are utterly surprised. And that's where the parties ended. Yeah. The parties ended both in life and in dream by my realizing this is not what I want. This is not what I want. I want to write. I want to keep writing. I want to write better. I want to have to be a hermit if I'm going to write. And then what I did, as you know from the sequence of the book, instead of getting all my sanity and my faculties together, I voluntarily, I asked for it, underwent a trip with Ordie Lang one morning in May, May the 6th, 1970. And it was indeed a long, a long trip, like, um, you know, those lines at the beginning of T.S. Eliot's The Journey of the Major, in which he describes the long journey and how hard it was, and the cold weather, and so on. Anyhow, I wish I could remember it. I did a moment ago, but it slipped. The LSD trip was, 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 was uh, disturbing beyond words, radical, I would say, mentally radical. And I would also say it was a turning point in my inner life, which then ultimately becomes my writing life. It deepened my already dark self, and it deepened my writing, because un with, under, the, under the influence and the many hours and then the many months, if not to say years, that followed after it, and, not just the recurring trips, but the uh, ultimately a gravity. So I'm glad I did it.
but I also know that it is something I wouldn't recommend my own children to have. Because nobody knows until, for instance, you take LSD. I mean, Aldous Huxley has written, he had a beautiful trip. But I think it maybe was mushroom he took. Some people have, you know, ecstatic um, experience under it. Maybe you have had with LSD. But what nobody knows before you take it is the particular liniment, uh, liniments and, and, and nature of your inner brain and mind, or whichever mind we shall call it. You don't know until you take it whether you're going to see you know, the golden acorns or whether you're going to have the gaping womb of hell that you have to step into. You don't know it till you, till you take it. And therefore, that is why it is a great risk. I have often said, rather insultingly perhaps, that I think a lot of bankers should be given LSD. <laughs> it would improve them, perhaps, make the, them a little more honest.